for myself at least, and I know a lot of other people, you know, we we do have a good cat, you know, I would say a good Rolodex, right, of candidates. So we can we call impact players, and we can place in most places, and we know they'd be good somewhere. But most of the time, I, I I learn the most I do from just talking to a hiring manager and figuring out what the heck is going on. You know, uh, what are they going through? Why is there pain? Why can't they fill it themselves? How many crews have they worked with? What went wrong? What went right? What do you want out of me? You know, and and that's the first part of it. Not even getting into the roles. What is going on? You know, and then I try to figure out what the company's really doing. And and the reason that being that is, is when you're in this world, it's such a demand market for automation engineers and salespeople. People aren't just drawn by a a paycheck anymore or a relocation to a sunnier, warmer place, right? Yeah. It's what's the technology, what is it doing now, how is it impacting now, and what it's going to do for the future. Absolutely. Engineers, are, are, are they want to know how things are going to go and how cool is it, right? What is the technology? I know I do. And so I, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and, and what's going to draw you out? You know, it, yeah. it's how can I work on this and how is it going to impact myself and, and the environment or, the, or, you know, the industry. And so that's number two. And then third is then it's the roles. Once you understand the human being behind it, the HR manager or the hiring manager, the company itself, what they're yeah. doing, what they're great at, what they need. Then you understand the role. You know, is it a controls person, PLC person? Is it a robotic engineer? You know, is it a mechanical design? Is it a salesperson that needs both of the acumen? You know, things like that. Then we can actually build out a profile from there and start talking to people. And, you know, on, on the candidate side, you know, most recruiters from what I've heard go out there and they throw a job description. They say, check this out. Is this good for you? Okay. Well, that's not going to work. It's, Hey, I have this exciting opportunity. I believe you'll be interested in. I don't know yet. You know, I love to know more about you. This is what the company does. That's also a sales job. A hundred percent. And and that's, that's that's the service part of it, right? Where, you know, companies don't have the time to reach out to candidates and say, this is what we do. Good. Check us out. Welcome to collaborative with Spencer Krause. This is a place for accomplished professionals to talk about their life and their work in an informal and hopefully an insightful way. If you like what you see, hit subscribe below. Enjoy the show. Welcome to Collaborative with Spencer Krauss. Our guest today is David Shakmajan. David is an executive recruiter with the Miller Resource Group. He specializes in recruiting people for industrial automation jobs. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted David to be on this podcast is he's probably one of the most passionate headhunters I've ever met. And I've met a lot <laughs> and uh, have done that job in some capacity. Uh, I like this guy a lot. David, welcome to the pod. Thanks, Spencer. I appreciate it. It's funny. I was thinking about you, you know, how we first met. First of all, Spencer uh, is is very good at what he does as well on both sides of the tech side Thank and you, the sir. personnel side. Yeah, he sent me a it was a card or postcard the first I think it might have been a met. Christmas. So we I I'm so Jewish, was, but yeah. I had we had Christmas yeah, cards did. made remember, at. Yeah. Uh, it took a while to get to me though. I remember that. I, I think there was a dreidel and a Christmas tree, and then we had That's a yarmulke. Was, yeah. We wanted to do something for Kwanzaa, but we couldn't find anything at Target that that like properly <laughs> represented Kwanzaa. I loved and, it. Uh, the coworker that was helping me make the card celebrated Kwanzaa, and he's like, "Yeah, there's nothing good here. Don't, don't do it." <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that, nice. I think that was my, I think that was my first uh, foray into supply chain issues. Was how long the card took to get to me. Uh, we, we, get, we get that <laughs> later. But no, I, I, I remember the first time you know I, I met who you were was because your reputation preceded yourself. I was working um, for a couple companies in in Pittsburgh. Well, I, I, they were my clients in terms of, of hiring the right candidates in robotics. And you really stood out. And of course, I didn't get that's to place you, which I will always, always uh, hold, hold that down. But um, yeah, that's how we met, obviously. And, and since then, I mean, what, year and a half, almost a year and three quarters ago. Yeah, it feels like more than that. Contact. It does. Yeah. It does. It's going by too fast, these years. It's, it's There's so much to do. And I think COVID was the no year that everybody COVID. lost. <laughs> so, yeah. Or at least the, you oh know, my the first gosh, year yeah. of COVID before we had the vaccine or anything. It's funny when you think about that, too, how it's hard to believe how things have shifted faster in in ways we already saw coming in automation i think that's crazy about COVID. was you know it was it was hard on so many people and hard on all of us right there's a real kick in the balls though for the industry yeah oh god i i think i think it accelerated where we where we knew we needed to go but people weren't willing to put the money into it um but with the lack of labor with you know distribution with with e-commerce i think you know automation being able to set and forget and program 
just totally took things to a new level. And and honestly, it's made us busier than ever. And I'm sure yourself too. So yeah, absolutely. It's, I was just telling it's you crazy to, to say work. We <laughs> thank COVID for that, but um, I, I am glad that we were able to sustain and figure out new ways to to do what we do best. So it's been it's been an interesting couple of years, that's for sure. Amen, brother. Yeah, no, I mean it, it's been fun, and I've talked to this with a couple of other guests where you know it's 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 just accelerated, like you said, stuff we knew was coming, stuff we've been working mm -hmm. on. It converted automation holdouts. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. there there have been you know so many uh, great things for the automation industry to come out of this you know not so great you know kind of yeah. calamity or whatever you want to call it. But um, yeah, I mean it's been busier than ever. I mean I. Like just today, as I was just saying, I, I had to turn down a gig. Somebody uh, approached me for doing a really interesting robotics project. So mm. it was, um, they wanted something that um, just a, a, a robotics a circuit board that was miniaturized mm -hmm. for a robot a communications okay. module that could withstand um, like the worst place you could ever be. So like 100 degrees centigrade, mm -hmm. 212 Fahrenheit. Just um, insane differences in temperatures. In, yeah, in, in yeah. like a, an environment of like pure crude oil, you know, and and it was a really fun. I, I mean, it was sad not being able to do this because it's just you know the puzzle solver in me it's is super like, interesting. Right, right, yeah. It's fucking interesting. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. want to work on that. But I mean, Form Logic, where I'm, I'm working, you know, as as their director of advanced projects now, has me doing all sorts of stuff, and <laughs> you know, I mean, it's it's just you know, it's just keeping me busy. <laughs> That's all that's right. and I remember that's right. I remember because the first time we actually spoke on camera in person was when you were doing those uh the mini drones. Yeah, Wasn't yeah, it? exactly. And so that's actually right. the office I'm in right now where we record this podcast. Oh man, I feel I, miserable. This is where I record too. this podcast. I'm always solo on this. Uh, <laughs> there's the obstacle course from ASME that we would run yes. those drones through. Um, yes. I'm actually looking at it right now. Uh, and oh, it's there's terrible at it. four oh. cameras and a monitor mounted on on the course. I, I think a four-year-old could have done a better job than I did. I, I uh, you were not the worst. So there, there was one uh, particular person that came in, and she was going around the perimeter of the joystick like it was a steering wheel. Like it was a really interesting <laughs> operator, and the robot was just kind of jiggling. Yeah, mine got stuck. Yeah, and so a lot of people got stuck. So those J okay. hooks were, were taken out. People left. Yeah, and right. that's right. And um, so I mean, you were you were not the only one, my friend. Right. I mean, like that that was a common failure mode. I dream about it sometimes, you know, I have oh, my no. person, but you know, cause I think I was recorded and I hope it's not somewhere on YouTube, you know, my, my faults. We got a bloopers reel and then we identify you personally. And... Benny Hill music with it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I think you're like, oh, he's, you'll, get, you'll get it. I didn't, I didn't get that, but uh, no, it's great to see what you've come though in, in that, that amount of time. It's yeah, it, it, it's crazy. I, I feel like we talk about how things grew I never thought that I would get into so much AI. That's yeah. crazy. AI. That's been an interest. I know a bunch of people that are entering into that field. The money has been crazy there for a while. And the funding, the funding. Is yeah. Crazy. No, I mean, there... I tried to place a guy. So I'm, I'm obviously no professional headhunter, but I, I did a little bit on the side a few years ago, just kind of as a hobby yeah. income. I think and... you were saying that you were trying to help people out and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also earn a buck or two. And sure. um, there, there was a guy that, I, I thought it was perfect. So I had a candidate with a $200,000 acquisition budget in New York City. And mm -hmm. um, they wanted to place a, a senior machine learning engineer. Um, and I got them someone they liked after like two or three candidates they didn't like. And um, this guy was, uh, he was a rock star. So he had, this was maybe four years ago. This guy had graduated in 1990 with a PhD in computer science from Carnegie Mellon. He had two to three okay. research papers a year, like without any gaps. And then he had no gaps in his work resume with like solid work in FinTech Just pretty much stud. the whole time. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. A total stud. And uh, basically client loved them. They were ready to hire him and he got uh, poached as it, I mean, the, another company came in and got him for more sure. money. Uh, it was an insurance company. Yep. $1.6 million is the yearly salary that they, they devoted to this guy. That's, that's a pretty good offer. My client couldn't compete. <laughs> so, uh, I don't think many people could. Yeah, I, I couldn't fault the dude, good. you know. It's just like, all right, yeah, it's, you know, $1.6 million. Not, not many people I, I, I honestly can't that. imagine being so good at something that you get that kind of salary. I, I Honestly, and I, I mean to say, I mean, we're, we're, and we're good at what we do here, but man, that is... Okay. It's one of the highest salaries I've ever heard of, especially for an engineer. Like, I mean, I've, 
there's one sales guy for intuitive surgical that I, I know of who made that much one, you know, year selling. That's true. Vinci's. That's true. I was, I, I actually, yeah, my, uh, a good friend of mine, his wife just finally uh, got hired on as a doctor. I, I don't know what field she's in, but I think it's like 600 grand a year, which is, you know, unreal That's good money. Yeah. The, the highest one I ever encountered in this job was about a million a year. Wow. Um, but it was a high ranking person at Honeywell. Okay. And I was, I was trying to, to get him into a different role of emerging technology. I think another kind of AI type, you know, nice. uh, I think a company was doing where engineer, manager, director, uh, uh, executive. like very, very engineer, executive engineer. You know what I mean? Cool. That kind of role where he rose in the ranks for probably you know, 30 years. And there was a company that was, that was taking AI in ag to be able to smell interesting yeah when a when a uh, a fruit was rotten and it kind of kind of anticipate all these different things around agriculture That's so pretty cool. they knew when to pick or when to get rid of and they were trying to be a little more efficient i think the salary i mean it was great for i mean for it was it was an executive role in the in a startup and it was like 350 and so i was oh great this is a great role people are going to be excited about it and people were but that's good you money. can't you can't fight a million dollars, you know, and and then of course, yeah, of course they get they get all the back end and stuff like that. But you know, Hamill's been around for a long time. But that was the biggest one I heard was about a million a year. Wow. Uh, when all said and done, yeah, I was pretty pretty impressed by that. Yeah, no, that's that's. I mean, I, I wouldn't fault the guy at all for you know taking that offer. He, he's like, you know, I'm all right. He's, I'm, I'm good over here. I said, I don't blame you. I said, can you recommend somebody to me though? That that's the big the biggest thing I learned about industrial automation or automation in general. Yeah. Is how smart of, small of the street it is. Oh, hey, amen. Robotics is like that as well, right? Which yes, is, I mean, I absolutely. guess automation is kind of in the same realm. It's yeah. I mean, all three of them, right? You, I basically you know, do automation yeah. now in my current job. That's what I was saying. I mean, you. When I think of robotics, the funny thing is now I, I almost don't even take it out of the automation aspect. Like I know, obviously, you could have a a you could have a um you know gripper attached to a, a six axis robotic arm, and you can control it if you want to. Yeah. But you know, everything I see around robotics comes down to AGVs, AMRs, you know, uh, programmed you know robotic uh, you know to pick and place or pick and pack, and everything is is set and forget now. Mm. You know, so it's like I always whenever I think about robotics, at least in the world that I work in, it's it's all automated. You know, especially distribution supply chain facilities. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, and. You talk about distribution supply chain facilities. I mean, some of the cleanest floors I've ever seen in my career. Unbelievable. In logistics centers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. I mean, it, it depends if they're, you know, and they have to lay out these tracks sometimes, right? For, yep. for some of them as well. So everything, yeah, it's, I'm I'm very happy that, that lately we've gotten into more of the logistics and supply chain world. That's a good realm to be in. I mean, it you know, is. Oh support my God. like a it, DHL or a UPS or a FedEx. I mean, you're, you're right? or an Amazon these Amazon, days. Amazon, Walmart. I yeah. mean, and even even the, you know, tier one, tier twos and, you know, I mean, DHL, right? And things like yeah. that. I think the crazy thing is, is that you, when I first got into industrial automation, robotics and, and machine vision and stuff like that, I was far away from it. I felt like, you know, I, I, I couldn't really empathize with what a lot of it was doing. I had to learn kind of what people were doing with it, you know, and now being so immersed in it, you know, especially with supply chain logistics, you feel it. You, 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 everybody around you is going through every, you know, there's, there's the, the toy shorters for Christmas or for the holidays and things like that. So it's kind of cool being in a world where you can touch it, you can feel it, and you're talking to people that are doing different, making differences what's, all around you. What's you know? some of the stuff that you saw when you started getting some of those facilities that kind of was the most mind blowing to you? Wow. Um, geez. I would say the size of things. Yeah. Like yeah, you, you know, uh, the tracks, the tracks that they're they're building now, right? You have you have you have your your tooling, and then you have your track, right? I mean, and they're able to manipulate 360 degrees now. Yeah. Right? I, it's incredible. There's no, there can be no storm. Now when you say, I, I probably should have specified this. Yeah. I kind of feel like a schmuck, but when you say a track, you mean like a rail system for a robot to be on top of? Like, like exactly. a axis? Okay, that's what exactly. I thought. Exactly. We're, we're, and, and I'm talking about ones that either flatten and some are straight vertical. Oh, that's you cool. Know, we, went, we went to FabTech this year. Yeah. And you, I mean, saw some of these tracks where they can be attached to they're, they're pretty big they must be about 10 to 12 feet in the air some of them right yeah uh, but they're able to maneuver anything around and pick and place and pull and you can attach a, a gripper pneumatics to any of these things also i've seen some conveyor amazing. systems in some of those facilities that oh are, yeah I mean, it's like something out of uh like a rube goldberg you know where you're just like yeah. how the hell you know does this i don't know like the amount of money it, into this place is is insane, you know. And and it's the perfect it's the perfect combination of of a few things, right? Of mechanical, of mechanical, 
electrical controls. You know what I mean? It's a perfect combination of both. Yeah, right? none of it works without software. No, oh, exactly. So yeah. you put all it together, right? You have a, you have the, you have the control, the electrical side, right? Design. You, you're putting all these pieces together, your components. You have your mechanical side doing it. Then of course you have your software, right? You have somebody who's coding, who's yeah. putting in the system to there. You know, and I think I think it's amazing, like I said, a conveyor line to see how that all kind of comes together and then what it does. And you can attach anything you want to it these days. And also, again, like you, you your said, the RFID and scanning. What was that? The the volume, the fact that it doesn't go down mm. and you're pushing millions of packages through some of these facilities. No, I mean tons of, and for all different sizes. Yeah. It could be anything from a lug nut, right? That 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 they're taking to a, a massive how many pound, you know, package. So yeah, it's it's that was impressive though, seeing the new tracks that they've come out with. Um, probably again, like the the vision systems. Um, so a couple of my clients, they're they're deep into like the, the embedded software game where they get integrated in any kind of system for let's say inspection you know to look at imperfections in packaging that's crazy it's just you know any little detail now they can almost find before it even gets out of the you know the conveyor line like what and are I some examples of defects process. you might run into well anything like, from think about labeling i mean you have to have specific labeling on most packaging right yeah. especially no matter if it's if it's goods consumer goods if it's produce whatever it is it has to have a traceability to it. It has to have a barcode. It may be some pieces on it that uh, identify a particular particular piece of it, hazard, whatever it is. Yeah. And so, you know, and of course that, and that's just even goes a, away from, um, you know, a, a de defect in the cardboard or the plastic or ripping something. Or it gets it. crushed, you know. And it's, exactly. It's just I think one I saw was like, a, like think of a, a, a pop can or, or a beer can, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, they, they can tell when things are stressed. You know, when something's, it's just incredible the the different details they can put into AI and software. So and even if it retained, like if, if you squished it and stretched it back out, you could actually get that from a camera system and tell 100%, it. 100%. Wow. 100%. That's incredible. It is. And it, it saves time. It saves, you know, it, it brings efficiency and efficacy and you can bring more volume through it that way too. And those people that were taking so much time that were reviewing these now can do more poignant work. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they can do better things and grow, the, grow their career. I think that's a topic we should probably touch upon too, is you know, there's still yeah. a lot of stigma behind automation of it, you know, getting rid of jobs. And I think it's just, it's more evolution. It's, it's how people are going to work around automation, not what automation is going to do in place of people. Well, that's one of the that's things I always liked thing. about seeing like real automation cases is there's always still people at these facilities. I mean, because, you know, it's just not every job is well suited to automation. And so, no. I mean, you're right. It, it's interesting to see the interplay between robots and humans when, when you really scale up and it's got to be reliable and you can't afford yeah. to have something that's just a toy that doesn't really work, you know, 99.99999% of the time. 100%. And there's some things we're just not as good at as yeah. humans. Yeah, that's right. You know, and we get sick. And we show emotions and things like that too. So again, I, I think working in tandem with automation is the key to the future and the, being comfortable around that type of world. I mean, there was a time when people didn't believe a car could go above 30, 30 miles an hour. And there was a time where we couldn't load things in and a time we couldn't fly and people were very scared of it. I yeah. mean, you know, it, it, it's just how we evolved with it, right? They go, the old, was it, the old John Henry story, right? The, the, the guy who used to uh, hit the railroad spikes. Oh, I don't know. Right. I think I may have heard this one, but uh, old tall tale, memory. right? Old tall tale of a, of a of a gentleman who used to be able to, you know, how fast he was the fast person that could drill a railroad spike into the ground. Yeah, and it was sad because now they wouldn't be able to do that because they had machines to do it and things like that. But when's the last time you heard about somebody be upset that they couldn't drill a railroad? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it, a crap it, job. It, yeah, we. It, I mean, it's good, good work. I'm sure it's labor, but people, we, you know, we evolve and we learn to work around it. And then new jobs are created for people to start at. Fair right, enough. Have, yeah. But I right? mean, there's people that run those machines now, right? That are 100%. They create, them, they create them too. They create them, they design them, they program them, they run them. Yeah, they, I mean, I used to work for Joy Mining. You know, our whole thing hey, was big industrial machines. There you go. <laughs> so. I, was, I was about to get into mining too. I mean, that's, that's a job right there where, I mean, that's a very dangerous job. Right. And yeah. people can work around something more suitable, a little more, uh, I would say, safe. I mean, that, that's another thing I was thinking about, too. One of the companies we worked for recently, they created this. Um, it's pretty much an HMI. I think of like a tablet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That gets rooted to, um, let's say, a, uh, kind of like a excavator. 
let's call it that big machinery that digs okay. earth, right? And it, it has a system where you input the parameters of the area you're digging and moving. And it it's not, it's a cobot kind of thing. It's not, it's not even a robot. Oh, cool. but it's, it's kind of a co-system where it's not fully automated, but it saves the person that used to have to be in front of this excavator from lining things up, from looking, you know, kind of helping out, which is pretty dangerous. Yeah. By having it blueprinted and 3D on this HMI tablet. Oh, that's cool. And, and it saves time. And it's more, it, all these different things, man. I think it's just going to be. I'd love to see that. Awesome. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you. I, cool. I, just don't, I never know how, you know, how how the companies want us to really talk about their product. I understand, yeah. Um, but we're, we're actually hiring right now for a managing director, uh, the oh, first cool. role for this company in the United States, which is super exciting. But if you think about how big construction Usually you hear about managing directors at, you know? at venture capital firms, I feel like. That's interesting. Well, it's a startup. So, I mean, okay. it, I mean, in, in a way, it, we're, you know, it is the first plug into a new area for them. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I guess it is. I mean, venture capital is obviously a little bit different, right? They're, they're the ones funding. But I think it just has to do with establishing partnerships, relationships. Oh, cool. So it is a very similar sales. role. Yeah, that's, yeah that's awesome. exactly. Yeah, it's very, very easy to be kind of in depth, you know, really into that world of cat and case and stuff like that, John Deere. So yeah, that's really cool. cool. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, I, um, that's that's awesome. I, I can think of some startups that I think it might be, but I'm not going to say anything. Don't do that to me now. Yeah, no, it's just I, I, my job, part of my job at SKA is to understand the robotics landscape and i'm a little yeah. bit of a of, you know kind of a nerd in this way you? never right but <laughs> actually like I, I i love learning about you know one of my favorite things to do is if somebody says they're recruiting for a position and obviously i might do this on a radio show and we can edit it out if i did but right you know i mean one of my favorite things to do is to to just guess who somebody's client is if they come to me with a job <laughs> so opportunity. True, yeah. And I mean, we started to talk about this off the air. So I, I feel like so many recruiters have have come to me. And so this is interesting. Do you mind if I kind of get into like the, some yeah, of the recruiting model we were talking about earlier? Yeah, please. So um, just for our listeners, like what I was saying earlier is that my understanding is that a lot of recruiters are, are basically like a salesperson, which is, I think, more of a four-letter word than it should be. I do sales, you do sales, sales is awesome. I mean, a good salesperson is an advocate for their client and, and you know, a, a somebody that works with them to give them, you know, an informed perspective and help them. And yes. that's that's how it how it should be and, and how I think the best people in that field function. You know, I, I think there's that cliche of the used car salesman that, you mm -hmm. know, Very people, much so. you know, I'm sure there's good used car salesmen out there and that's probably not even fair to those people. Sure. It's but, an old adage. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I mean, that's the stereotype, right? That, you know, all of us are trying to overcome and, and the ones of us that are good have overcome long ago and, and you know, our clients trust us. That's not like that. Mm -hmm. But um, a recruiter basically is a salesperson um, and, and they work with, you know, one or more sourcing individuals that basically bring them client or not clients, candidates to sell. Mm -hmm. And then they take that to their clients um, and the product that they're selling is those candidates. So you were saying it's a little bit different at Miller, but that that's more or less kind of the truth of how the industry works. So I was interested to kind of get into that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, it has to be, I think, under the, you know, the category of sales because you think about what a great salesperson does, right? They, they have a service most likely or, or a product. It's one of the two usually, sure. right? Yeah. And I, I think that for us, the product and the service are one and the same, where. In sales, a great salesperson understands the needs first and foremost. You can't sell something and you can't provide something unless you understand what the pain is. And at Miller, first of all, Gary Miller, my my, my president, owner, CEO, everybody, oh, you know, cool. he's been in this world for almost 40, I think 47 years. Wow. And and he just he teaches us to get immersed into the world that we're into. That's awesome. You know? And you clearly know a lot about automation just from the conversation I love it. we've been having. I, I'll tell you, it's the best. There's no cooler place to be in right now, if you ask me, than automation. So nice. I, I think I fell lucky into that one right there. I but, feel good you know, about my job too. You should. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, but yeah, we, we. I think the most of the time, for myself at least, and I know a lot of other people, you know, we we do have a good cat. You know, I would say a good rolodex, right, of candidates. So we can we call impact players, and we can place in most places, and we know they'd be good somewhere. But most of the time, I, I, I learn the most I do from just talking to a hiring manager and figuring out what the heck is going on. 
You know, uh, what are they going through? Why is there pain? Why can't they fill it themselves? How many crews have they worked with? What went wrong? What went right? What yeah. do you want out of me? You know, and, and that's the first part of it. Not even getting into the roles. What is going on? You know, sure. and then I try to figure out what the company's really doing. And, and the reason that being that is, is when you're in this world, it's such a demand market for automation engineers and salespeople. People aren't just drawn by a, a paycheck anymore or a relocation to a sunnier, warmer place, right? Yeah. It's what's the technology? What is it doing now? How is it impacting now? And what is it going to do for the future? Totally. Engineers, are, are, are they want to know how things are going to go and how cool is it, right? What is the technology? I know I do. And so I, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and, and what's going to draw you out? You know, it, yeah. it's how can I work on this and how is it going to impact myself and, and the environment or, the, or, you know, the industry? And so that's number two. And then third is then it's the roles. Once you understand the human being behind it, the HR manager or the hiring manager, the company itself, what they're yeah. doing, what they're great at, what they need, then you understand the role. You know, is it a controls person, PLC person? Is it a robotic engineer? You know, is it a mechanical design? Is it a salesperson that needs both of the acumen? You know, things like that. Then we can actually build out a profile from there and start talking to people. And, you know, on, on the candidate side, you know, most recruiters from what I've heard go out there and they throw a job description. They say, check this out. Is this good for you? Okay. Well, that's not going to work. It's, Hey, I have this exciting opportunity. I believe you'll be interested in. I don't know yet. You know, I'd love to know more about you. This is what the company does. So that's also a sales job. Future. 100%. And, yeah, and that's, that's, that's the service part of it, right? Where yeah. you know, companies don't have the time to reach out to candidates and say, this is what we do good. Check us out. Candidate so is I, the product. Reaching out yeah. to candidates is the service. That's interesting. Yeah, and okay. Exactly. And I feel like we're kind of both then. We are the service and the product, even ourselves, because our, our service and product is, is what we can do for both sides. It's introducing a candidate to a great op, you know, opportunity they don't know about. Yeah. Introducing a company to somebody they don't know about, but we know the intricacies of how to vet somebody and qualify them too. So it's like, Hey, what are you doing? Why are you unhappy? Are you happy? You know, what's great in your career? how did you get there? Where do you want to go? What's your personal, you know, all these little things that can say, you know what? sounds like you're, you're ready for a new position. I understand things you don't, you don't like, and it sounds like you're doing this now. It is fun giving somebody, you know, that doesn't like their job somewhere they enjoy being. It's And when you hear it in their voice yeah, saying, wait, I can do this. Where is this? You know, and you can line it up with. You can also see people that have like been somewhere for like a really long time and are kind of disillusioned. Like, wait, (laughs) wait, I can like what? Like the market's willing to bear how much? Wait, no, 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 but like, oh yeah, my family will be taken care of on the health. Yes, you're you're telling me like we get to I get to go in this place and work on that thing. You know, that's awesome. And I'll tell you, that's another thing that was I think was helped out by our current past two years was uh, you know you remember. You know, think about a guy who was traveling 70% of the time. Yeah. And he had to be in the office every day. Now he's working remotely. And then you'll hear, oh, yeah. you could live you could live in Arkansas, be remote to company in Boston, and then travel, maybe you know, one offs here and there, and then take care of your family instead of missing all that time. Yeah. So absolutely. you know, remote work has been big too. I'd say the, the hardest one of my thing favorite coworkers is, oh, is I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, please um, do. No, go ahead. But he lives in Atlanta and um it's you know full-time guy i mean there's the great airport schedule from atlanta to pittsburgh and he can just jump on a morning plane and be here that day if he needs to be yeah exactly a couple hours maybe, but, maybe i mean less. you know dudes out of the office he feels like like my wingman you know i'm just like yeah this yeah. guy's awesome you know he's oh, got yeah. my back you know and i was and I are talking multiple nice times a day nice yeah yeah it's, fucking it's, awesome. it's just it's just it adds so much more time too you know we're all growing we're all adults here you know it, it yeah. in, in to offer a little bit more time is, I think, very important for people and their families. I think the hard thing is, though, and I will say this. So because of the demand, I, the hardest things we go through is time. Time kills everything. And yeah, if you find somebody great, they're probably talking to two other companies. Yep. And if you don't have a direct line to your hiring manager and you don't say, listen, things are going to get messy, messy here. Your enemy. You want- that's tough. And, yeah. and, and, and money does come into play, obviously, and stuff like that. But otherwise that, man, I'll tell you, no better industry to be in. No, I, I, I love recruiting. Recruiting for me, honestly, to help both sides out and then to learn more about new technologies every day. I'm very ADHD. You can't, I'm not sure if you can tell how much energy I have. Yeah, um, similar on my end. <laughs> I require input constantly. You remember, remember the movie uh, Short Circuit? 
Yeah, so definitely yeah. Need more input. You know, that's that's how I am all day. You know, so I feel you on that. it fulfills me in so many different ways. You know, I'm a people person, so I love to work with people like you and, and these other people. Yeah, I'm, uh, like I'm a, you too. know, a, a tech junkie. You know, so I love to learn about this, and I put those two sides together. And if I can take individuals and companies and bring them together and have have them live happily ever after, I don't know if there's a better way to get paid. That that, that should be on my tombstone, I think. That little script. Right that now. would be a great thing to be on anybody's tombstone. <laughs> I mean, I think that's that's beautiful, right? Um, <laughs> I, I was just thinking about what you said about being a tech junkie and just getting off on it. And I, I remember um, when I used to be an intern at SpaceX, like way back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, so cool, by the way. So cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. But it, I remember going to like science, like I went to like the Smithsonian Museum uh, mm -hmm. here in space in Washington, D.C. as a kid. And I remember seeing these capsules and then to be able to sit in like a prototype space capsule that the world at the time didn't know about yet. Uh, Getting the, chills, man. Yeah, and you know, it was so much cooler than going to a museum. It was like, you know, <laughs> wow, you know, you're you're actually working on it. And that's you know, that's like two levels above, you know, like just being a spectator and, and you felt really good. But that's what you're doing now and, and that's what I'm trying to say is, you know, to mm. actually be able to work on stuff that, that thrills you and yeah gets you interested. I think that's the first time I felt that way, but it's not the last, you know. It's uh, that's a that's a really good point. You know, I've been working in, in hospitality and in recruiting and things like that and for so long. I guess I always just made it about people, and then the technology fell afterwards, right? Because for, for a while, I was pretty agnostic. It wasn't until I got to Miller that I, I really focused in on industrial automation because that's one of the sides besides see, you know, food that food group that they're known for. Yeah. And um, so I guess, like, to, to your point, it was always people to me that came natural, and that was my, my fuel. But then the the passion, the interest apart from that came from the technology. Cool. So you're right. I guess that really is that's like that is my Smithsonian experience, right? Is to is to feel that way about what's coming out right now and and to learn more about it and you know how, how it's gonna affect you know everybody's future. So that, that's actually really cool. And the hard yes. thing about space, I say is I can't pull anybody from there. They all want to stay there. I keep <laughs> I work a lot in in, uh, in California. There's a lot of good SpaceX engineers and they don't want to seem to leave. So. It's like a magnet for know. talent for sure. I mean and they get these fanboys that are just fanatical and girls too. I mean just everybody, <laughs> you know, and, and I mean people are just so interested in what they're doing. I I think that you know it's like you're not gonna be able to attract someone like that away when they feel like they're yeah. No, I don't blame them though, because that's yeah, the kind of company sure. that I, that's the kind of company that you can tell the story to somebody too and get them jazzed up. You know? Not only so, that, but like you get that in your stuff. resume and, and you're hireable forever. Oh <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like having Facebook, it's like having Google and yeah. Amazon and stuff like that, you know? And yeah, I, I, I definitely like that too. I think that's one of the things we offer, offer people too, is like, let's say I'm working with a small integrator, right? But that integrator gets to work in some of the most high tech places in the country or on oh, the planet. Oh, for sure. I mean, there's so many integrators that go into Amazon on a daily right? basis. Yeah. Yes. I mean, yes, working with the best technology we've ever seen, right? And and the integrator though, maybe they're 20 people deep, they they don't know how to sell themselves. They're you know, they're engineers, they do really good work, but how are they gonna tell somebody that story? And I think that's cool that we can say that and say, hey, this small company is growing at a rapid pace. They need someone like you to help them grow. The trajectory is great, by the way. Would you want to touch this type of robotic? Would you want to program this AGV? Did you know they work? And, and they do, you know. And I, can, I can, we can tell that story. <laughs> I think that's really cool, man. That's, that's really cool. That's some. Um, yeah, I like that a lot. I mean, that's that's a cool part of the job to see somebody get jazzed over that. Like, oh crap, what is that? I never. I or or people say, I want to work on those. You know, I want to learn. And the companies can say, you know what, you're good at this. We'll start you here, and then we can cross train you to evolve into here. That's I cool. mean, there's so many different ways, man. It's just, it's a cool time to be in it. You know, I mean, I was talking to someone about AMMRs today, which mm. I didn't even know that acronym, but apparently it's autonomous mobile manipulator yeah. robot. So it's a Robots, robot arm yeah. on a fucking base. Yes. And that I was just like, well, that's cool that that's becoming a product. Like, uh, you know, I guess different robot arm companies are coming out with these offerings and yeah, it's, it's pretty neat to see, it's to see that stuff. Neat. Yeah. I mean, and, it's super neat. I don't know how they're handling because uh, I just haven't worked with these yet directly. I mean, I'm, I probably will soon, but I don't know how they're handling localization yet. So getting the base mm -hmm. figured out where it's at so you know where the arm is at so you can grab things mm -hmm. accurately. 
or if they're using I'm, visual servoing so you don't have to do that i'm, I'm sure listening. it's going to be very sensor oriented yeah. you know i mean because you've seen the ones that that are are heavy that maybe they stamp or they they're a little bit more more weight to them when a person gets in that crosshairs they immediately shut down they can yeah. understand a, a lot of times that's like a safety laser like they'll have like a, a sick yes. or like a that's kiosk correct. system so i was thinking i was thinking sick yeah i was thinking six seconds. yeah yeah, yeah. We're, yeah, putting those on things right now. Um, but they're awesome. Six great. Yeah, yeah everybody a great, uses great six. Company. I don't know. That's yeah. a secret. You Keans, know I mean? Cognex, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Keans, exactly. Um, and I mean, Cognex has their own, you know, pieces de resistance, as it were. But you know, I I, I agree. I mean, it's neat to see. Um, and uh, I mean, it's exciting. You know, like uh, there's there's a company in Pittsburgh called Secret, and um, yeah, I know. See, I I tried to get them as well as those guys. Yeah, come out of there. Join this company. Nope, we're yeah. staying here because yeah, I see a lot of guys go from from Uber to Seagred. A lot of people shift. Yes, a lot of people shift from Uber to Seagred. Yeah, yes. I was telling you, like our our main recruiting person is Uber Sourcy. Uber, yeah, an Uber right. sourcer. So her thing right. was, she was the one behind the uh, you know the headhunter that would that would yep. go out and find people you know and, and just really really good at searching, and so. She found me, and I was like, how the hell did you find me? Like, I'm not, like, some celebrity. Like, what the fuck did you, like, how'd you do that? You know, and she but, was like, But hey, she was... knew how you could impact. That's the thing, Matt. That's, yeah. a, good, that's a good source person right there, right? Absolutely. I, I'm highly uh, in, you know, admiration of what she does. And, well, you're I mean, good at what you do, though. I mean, come on, you, you. you look at your background. I mean, and then... But am I, am I that easy to you. search? Like, I mean, you've, you've looked for me before. Like, am I easy that's to find good, on LinkedIn with, like, a, a good LinkedIn question. equivalent of a Goog? I, 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 I can't answer the question because I only know what I, how I, what I do. I only know how, like the input that I have to search for people like you. Yeah. And, and it comes for me pretty simple, I, you know, because I do it every day and I, you know, and I know different tips and tricks, but sure. I mean, I think most things, most people are pretty accessible. If you know how to search. Well, I guess things. LinkedIn has been a game changer. I mean, that, it is, yeah. you know, and it, it will continue to be, I mean, unless I something so, else too. comes out, I don't know, man, sure. this is like LinkedIn's awesome. It, but I the mean, fact I, that I, it, it, it kind of hits like you were saying, I mean, LinkedIn is, is kind of like, you know, Miller in the way that it's mm -hmm. providing a product and a service at the same time. It is. I mean, it is simultaneously and, and a forum as well. That's true. Yeah, and I mean, you it's know? you're right. It's it's basically Facebook, you know. Yes. It's indeed. its own headhunter. It's indeed, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, it's right, right. It's it's a place Last for you to views. Yeah, exactly, I mean. exactly. And I mean, you can moonlight. You can find people. You can just talk sure. about how your day was or what you're passionate about professionally. Hundred um, percent. I put all these episodes on there. I mean, this one will be advertised on there. I'm sure as well. Like there'll be like a you know two sentence blurb or. Can't wait. You know, yeah, wait. it'll be fun. Um, and uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, LinkedIn's great. I, I really enjoy it. Um, I mean, if we're getting philosophical, there are a few of Reed Hoffman's philosophies I don't necessarily agree with. But um, I mean, mainly it's the if if you don't have bugs in your code, you release too soon philosophy. Mm -hmm. Where and I think that just comes from a very uh, robotics mindset where like. You know, I'm just like, no, scope it in so you don't have bugs. Like, just get rid of that feature because you can't afford a bug because somebody could get hurt. <laughs> but that's not it. They're, they're selling a web platform. So I think I'm just, right, right. I'm just biased from the wrong direction, you know? So I mean, a... just a different, not the wrong direction, a different direction. Yeah. yeah you know, right. you, you know what you've been to. You know what you've done. You've, you've seen the repercussions sometimes of a couple of things here and there. So I think you're just coming from experience. Yeah, yeah, for sure. To your credit, though, you mentioned about, you know, am I that easy to find? What, this what you do here um i think makes you even more valuable though people seeing your face and thanks. how you how you speak with people and your passion too Yours there's a couple well. individuals thank you there's a couple cool. individuals that we're close to too and, and even gary was saying this person could be an impact player i mean look look at what you can show to the hiring manager because if this world is about visibility let's be honest yeah, everybody wants to build a brand, a personal brand. And you could be an entrepreneur within a company. And especially as a sales individual too, where you know you, you can provide so much to these potential clients and potential uh, customers up front and they can see and they can trust you, hear your voice and you know almost know who you are. Yeah. And so what, what you're And you're the person they, they call when they have a problem and they need you Absolutely. Know, like answers or solutions. Yes. And, and they want and, and to see somebody talk in their face, I mean that's you're building almost trust organically. Thanks. Right. 
I think that's an amazing thing. And, and not everybody can do that or has the platform or really just the, the want to do that, but it sets you aside. And I, and I think it, it's going it to be a big thing for years to come. Yeah, I think, I I think everybody that's great. ever owned a business has to become an expert in sales. <laughs> so. Oh gosh. Or, or, or hire the right person right yeah, for next sure. to you. Cause there's a few. Yeah, you know, there, that, there are, but it's easier said yeah. than done. That's true. And I think every, every really good business owner or business leader just learns how to do it. Like, our CEO at Foreign Logic is amazing because he understands the IT, he understands, you know, the the finance, he understands mm -hmm. the engineering, his electrical engineering nice. background. I mean, he is one of the smartest people I've ever met. I mean, and he is firing on so many different cylinders. And it, it's, you know, one of the few reasons like I, I'm I'm just happy to be working for someone is because I believe in the guy. <laughs> That's the so company. awesome to hear that. I mean, yeah. tell me about that. Let, let me ask you that. What what was the you know, as a recruiter trying to learn more about people's sure. aspirations and their goals, what was the main drive for you to really say, you know what, this is my next role? So it's actually interesting you say that. So what had happened is there was another company in Texas that reached out and uh, they offered me a, just a lot of money um, to, to go and work for them. Um, and it was cool what they were working on. It was really interesting. Um, I, I won't say what because I don't want people to be able to ID them. Sure. But, uh, you know, it was an interesting product. It was a little bit outside what I've done before, but it was something I felt like it could be valuable in. And um, again, very large dollar amount. But, you know, the more I talked to them, the more I realized, like, this is maybe not the best cultural fit. Okay. And, um, you know, I, I, you know, I mean, good opportunity, but eh, it's not, mm -hmm. not entirely me. I don't know if I would feel like I can be myself here. Okay. And so um, there was this company, Forum Logic, that I had been talking to in the capacity because of that source of person I told you about, Adriana. Yeah. Right. So she she had reached out to me, and I thought like, you know, maybe I'll sell these guys consulting services, you know, and, mm -hmm. and that would be a better role. So you know, they'll, they'll be a client. We'll work with them. We'll we'll help them out. But since I started talking to them, just. Paul, the CEO, was aggressively trying to hire me the whole time, you know, like, <laughs> you know, like, ah, oh, you're really good, you know, I would love to have you on our team, like, yada, 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 there's all these, and he's just baiting me with these interesting problems, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. like, we would love to do this, there's this it, thing we're yeah, working yeah, on, yeah. what about this thing, if we, you know, scale to this size, we can do X, Y, and Z, <laughs> you know, and I'm just like, ah, oh, it's all really interesting, man, but like, you know, I, I not looking to really settle down or, or do a full-time gig uh, because okay. I've got a lot of clients that are relying on me. And so when I started to consider that for this Texas company, because they throw out that dollar amount, you know, I just was like, eh, I don't want to work for these guys, but maybe if someone else could match this dollar amount, it'd be good. So I, I called up form logic. I'm like, Hey, these are the specs of my offer. Um, can you, you do for me? meet yeah. or exceed this? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> And so they were like, absolutely. <laughs> so they, That's they, awesome, man. Yeah, they, they came and, and honestly, it's been such a great group of people. It was a way better cultural alignment. And, you yeah, know, it's, it right. it's, it's been amazing. It right. I mean, everybody there gets to do like a really high degree of just task variety. I mean, you, you don't really get pigeonholed. I mean, the fact that I have a title there is rare. Most people do not. Um, okay. And, and you just can kind of do whatever you want to do. I mean, interesting. I brought interesting in kind of a uh, organization or, or org chart, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, like obviously, if you're not creating value, it's one thing. But mm -hmm. you know, it, it's it's a very uh, lateral company, and that you can kind of transition between a lot of different roles, and they and nice. they want their people to be you know sort of T type personalities. That's great. You're really good at one thing, but you can do everything. Absolutely. And so, I mean, yeah, in the last, Good you know, for you, man. thank you. It, it's been a really, really rewarding experience. And so I, I brought in a colleague of mine who I've really enjoyed working with, who's super reliable and, and somebody that, you know, has just, just, you know, the kind of person you can trust. And, you know, if you put them in a, in a hot situation, they're not going to make you look bad. I was going to say and that they're, they're going to reflect you very well. Exactly. Right? Right. And so I brought in a colleague like that and, you know, I had them walking around the shop floor and actually I was lucky enough. One of their old coworkers from like a company they're working at before is also on our production floor. And so I talked to this guy my first day. I'm like, you know, cause I used to work at so-and-so. I'm like, you know, so-and-so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
he's like, oh, so and so, that guy's awesome, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, he started talking, All street, man. and I, he's like, I'm like, if I were to bring him in, like, how would you feel about that? He's like, I would vouch for him. I'm like, great. That's so cool. Yes. Yeah, and so you know, I, I I brought this guy in uh, yesterday, and um, you know, we were we were just uh, you know talking. I, I introduced him to a whole bunch of people. And this other guy is just really selling him hard. He's like, you know, yeah. like he's like, you know, how much can I make? He's like, well, how much do you want to make? Like, what's what's the amount that would make Damn. you want to leave your Damn. current company? You know, he's like, well, what can I do here? He's like, well, what do you want to do? Yeah, like, right, what are you interested right. in? Well, what you, know? you do here? <laughs> and and I love that because I think that if you if you bring in people into a role that they're passionate in and you give them their dream job then that person is going to move mountains to get that job done. And, and they're going to be more motivated than ever. And yes, you're going to have one of the most loyal, you know, just hardworking, like yep. amazing, incredible, just content people ever. And I, I'm one of them, right? I feel that yes. way. Yeah. You're, so, you're, you guys are examples of, of what a good opportunity culture. And then in the drive to, to really go around your passion can do for not just you, but for a company in total. You know? I, absolutely. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And to pay you pretty well is going to help too, of course. For sure. It but it, it, it's work. a combination. I mean, I, I think, yeah. you know, good, good, you know, pay benefits and options plus, yes. Yes. you know, fulfillment. I mean, you know, I mean, it, it's all necessary. Like if, if you're getting underpaid, but you know, you feel good about what you're doing, eventually you're going to run out of money because, you know, it's going to cost you more to eat than you're making at work. And, exactly. Or you're not going to have any savings or... Your student loans are going to murder you. I mean, there's Absolutely, so many different yeah. things that could, that could make living, that unsustainable. Everything. And so, everything. I mean, you know, the smart companies like NVIDIA, Google, I mean, Uber for a while, uh, you mm -hmm. know, and maybe not as much as they were. But, um, you know, I mean, they understand that and, and they have the financing to sustain it. And so, Well, that's a big part of it, too. I mean, there, I, mean I will admit there's. You know, for some some of the smaller tier companies, there's there's a, an amount of trust, right? With people when they're getting on the, the early floor to say, you will get, we will get to this point. You know, can, can you work with us at this time? Yeah. And there are those there are those situations I think that are worth it, but only for the right people. Um, yeah, absolutely. It, 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 and it's hard to identify, and that's I think that's hard in, in our seat too. Is you know we're listening to these hiring managers and vetting vetting them and trying to understand that, and we sometimes have to really trust them and go by what they're saying. Um, you know, the hard part now is we're so busy telling people no, you know, I never thought we would get to a point where if, if a company doesn't seem to want to pay the market or more value, right. To compete yeah. and things like that. We have to just say, I can't work on this. Yeah. That makes sense. It's crazy. I mean, somebody it's just came up to me. Yeah. I, I, again, I don't mean to cut you off. I apologize for that. <laughs> But, but I could talk all day, so please cut me off. David, I'm a I'm we're getting, we're getting, myself. I'm getting horse over here, you know? Yeah, I feel like I had fake COVID. Like, I thought I had COVID. My doctor asked me how many hours a day I was talking, right? He's like, when do you start your day? I'm like, 7.30 a.m. He's like, yeah. when are you day? Like, 2 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, how often are you talking in your meetings? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm the cheerleader for everything. <laughs> <laughs> He's like... You do not, he's South African. He's like, you do not have COVID. You are talking too much. You know? Talk too much. Like, exactly. My mom, told me, my mom told me when I was 12. Thanks a lot, Doc. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But he, basically, it's like your symptoms don't match up. You don't have COVID. You talk too fucking much. And so your throat hurts. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, so. You can hear mine. We talked before. I'm raspy. If yeah. I, I talk all day, and by the end of the day, it just, it's gone, you know? Yeah. It's, it's a what is that a, a um a war wound or a work hazard right <laughs> one thing i was thinking about too and i thought it was really cool some of my my current clients they came from being prospects of mine believe it or not yeah where they were higher tier and i was trying to place them into you know a different role and they had moved on themselves to another role oh. but they said hey i remembered how you treated me i remembered how you really knew where i'll know, never the forget organization it was doing yeah I want to work with you now. Yeah. And that's really, really awesome. So, I mean, I talk about giving people advice or talking about that. This whole world is about relationships. This whole thing is about relationships. If you can't build trust and show people that you have their best interests in mind and that you really know kind of where they're coming from, where they want to go, and then what the interest industry is probably providing as well, you're not going to, you're not going to succeed, you know? So I, I, think I completely agree. 
And look what we've done. I mean, you and I, like I said, we, I think it started with one conversation over the drones, right? Or, or on LinkedIn. I think we started on one conversation on LinkedIn. Hey, how are you? I'm Dave. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, join us. You told me, join us at this thing. Okay, I'll check it out. You know, and we did <laughs> that whole thing. And then we stayed in touch, you know, and, yeah, I, and things, we, we enjoy each other's company. But Absolutely. I think the passion behind the, the world, I think we can provide each other two big things. One is a, a forum for us to go back and forth and understand each other, how you doing and support each other. Likewise, brother. But the other part of it is what's going on in this world? What's going on in, in the world that we're both in? You know, and you, I might hear something you didn't know. Yeah. You might hear something I know. And then I might know somebody you want to talk to. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you might know or something I, I, know I somebody need to know. To. Yeah. 100%, man. So that's that's why I'm happy to, to meet people like you. And there's a couple people, you know, that that uh, that people would know. They have their, you know, their own kind of podcasts and vlogs and stuff like that. You know, uh, our automation people uh, that we've connected with and been on their shows or met them in person. And I'll tell you, it's it's just a good gig to be in. I recommend it to anybody, man. Being, being recruited into automation, you got to get in. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I know people that have done it that are, you know, just – passionate and, and those are the kind of people I respect. I mean, yeah, that's one of my favorite things in a human is just giving a shit about what you do. <laughs> I think, you know, I mean, it's contagious, right? Because if, if you care and, and, you know, you really are trying to make a connection or yeah, to, you feel to solve this problem. Care. Exactly. I mean, it's, 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 it's definitely palpable. And if you've any kind of empathy whatsoever, I mean, it's contagious oh, yeah. and it makes you a better person, you know, just to be around that person. So, so. much. I, I, I mean, we, I, you and I had conversations about personal stuff too in the past, you know, sure. and absolutely. And, and, and it never went to the way of like, why are we talking about this? It was just like, hey, you know, what are you going through? How are things going? What's the search like and stuff like that? Yeah. You know, I, I think you're right. I think empathy is, is a, it's kind of a lost art when you meet people online sometimes. Yeah, um, yeah I agree. And I, I think it should shouldn't be. I think it should be the, your first thing. Well, even to a understand. person, some person. people just don't oh, seem sure. to possess it, unfortunately. That's true. But yeah, especially not right off the bat. You know, yeah. I think, I think that myself is. Yeah, I'm, I'm again very high energy. By the end of the day, though, I sleep really well, and I think it's because I Jealous. want to give everybody <laughs> everything. You know, I I try my best to. Like when I hug somebody, I hug them. I give them a hug. I want them to feel that. Yeah, a know? friend who's a performance engineer at NVIDIA, he gives the best hugs. So like, right? Fuck you it like weird? You never, but yeah. you know it, right? Don't you know it when somebody gives you a good one? Yeah, know? no, it makes me feel good. Yeah. Like I'm like, oh, this yeah, guy really shit. enjoys being on me. Man. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so. like, oh damn, I got lucky, man. My, you know, my, I'm, you know, my. I think I told you a story before. You know, I, I grew up very blue collar. You know, dad and mom from the south side of Chicago. Very, you know, humble upbringings. Always had enough. You know, but yeah. Uh, my, my dad. By the way, I love that picture of your dad in the army that i saw oh yeah the other day. Did you, isn't that cool yeah like, carl if you can 19? in any way edit this in yeah. if you hear me saying this like it's it's a great picture we should have this on here but just, i love that picture. it was like seeing you <laughs> in <laughs> vietnam it was crazy i mean it was he um he we go through different stages because there were when he was at that age like about like 17 through 20 whatever we looked a lot alike but if you go before that and after that, it looks yeah. like my brother, you know, it's kind of funny that happens. Yeah. So my dad, was, uh, when he was like younger, like, like, like maybe like, like under 15 years old, he looked like yeah. I did when I was that age. Yeah, it's so and odd, So we right? had that, but now, I mean, I'm, he's not, he has hair. I don't. And so uh, it's like, that was a choice. That's not a choice. No, no, no. I'm bald. I, um, I, I chose to shave it down to Jason Statham length. Because I, that's I was a, male pattern baldness. Oh, I knew you looked like somebody, and I couldn't figure out who it was. It's just uh, and you, you, you're joking. I appreciate I, I, that. <laughs> it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Um, yeah, yeah that, that picture was cool. That my mom sent it to me once, and it's getting a little cheesy. So I'm, I'm very close to my fa my parents and my brother, and um, they're my, honestly my heroes, all of them. Yeah. And um, I love my, my brother mom, too. I was just talking to him today. I mean, it's like to to have that kind of, you know, relationship is huge, and. My mom sent me that a text one time and it said, my man. And it was my dad, that picture. <laughs> and I laughed. I said, that's awesome. You know, they still had that love, you know. And um, just thinking about how different, you know, he was only what 20 years old in that picture. You know, it was 1969. He was in Fort Polk, Louisiana. You know, uh, he didn't get a chance to see the the men walk on the moon because he was doing basic training and stuff like that. Yeah. And then of course he went to Vietnam, you know, wow. and um I, I can't imagine myself being in a position like that. I don't even think I had the mental fortitude, you know, at 25 to do something like that. But yeah, for sure. Um, I, so I appreciate you bringing myself. that up. But he always taught me a few things. He honestly, he just, when it came to work, you know, he never preached school, honestly, to be honest. He never said go to school. He said, well, if you do, you know, 
do it well. But he always said, I want you to do a few things. You know, life's about this when it comes to work. He goes, you know, it's obviously hard work. Um, it's, um, what do you call it? Good timing. He said, it's common sense. And he said, it's getting noticed. He said, if you can, if you can put those four things into your energy, you go become a Davy boy. Davy boy, you, if you can put those four things into your energy and how good you are people, he's like, you will always have a job. Wow. And that's kind of what I've always lived by. It's, it's being natural with energy, caring about people, working as hard as I can, you know, um, I'm showing up, having common sense at the right times and letting people know who I am. And that's, it's never failed me since. You know? That's incredible. Yeah. That's better than the advice my parents gave me, which was go to school. <laughs> yeah, right, right, write this down. Yeah, exactly. Go to school, spend money. No, I, they, they, they actually, my dad, when I was a kid, said that my job was a Jew was to compete with the Asians and the Indians in school. Never mind that Indians are Asians, <laughs> right? And like, so, like growing up into like that that world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I, that is funny, the difference in cultures and things like that, how, how some are a little more prominent right in the engineering world and things like that that always that always surprised me actually i didn't, I didn't really notice it until i started getting to more of the engineering rules and things like that yeah. but i'm sure he did him proud right yeah no he, he's happy i mean him and my granddad awesome. were both doctors oh, and wow. so i feel like i'm a little what bit of a disappointment doctors, uh my dad's an orthopedic surgeon my granddad's a cardiologist or was he croaked recently well oh, i'm sorry no nah, it's all right i appreciate that um but he is a good guy i mean he 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 accomplished a lot. He was ahead of his time. He was one of the first guys to use uh, EKGs. And then wow. uh, there was really? there was a hospital locally where the cardio branch was named Kraus, which is my last name. Um, Very cool. And so it was kind of neat. And then he ended up as the head of cardiology at a different hospital, you know, and, um, you know, then they, you know, he retired when he was like 90 and then he died when he was 95. So he lived a full life. I mean, I, I you know, it's amazing. I won't live that long if I'm lucky. So smart. I mean, you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, so, Jesus Christ. Man. I might, but I probably won't. I mean, let's be honest. You know, the, the probability of any person living that long is, is small. I mean, so. the technology they're coming out with right now, you never know. Maybe. I mean, I'm not against it. I, I would like to, right? I, I mean, I'm enjoying the run I'm having. I, I, I would like to healthy. maintain my cogency for long of it. Because for me, yes, I think quality thing. of life and, and fulfillment is more important than duration and longevity of life. So. Oh, if 100%. I could have 80 solid years of performance and, and fulfillment, I'd prefer yes. that to 110 years of no, sitting I, on my I, ass, you know, eating Pop-Tarts. And so, yeah, that, that it's an interesting thing to think about, right? Cause you know, I, I, I it's one of those things we, we continuously think about and yet is a, is in our subconscious. We don't really put it in the forefront, right? Is death. Yeah, right. Absolutely. We're just trying to figure out how to sometimes how to pay your bills and how to talk to this person and how to sure. achieve this task, you know. And, and and I think you know we're trying to be fulfilled in the moment or at least in the near future. Absolutely. A lot of times we don't think about it. But what's on your mind is what can I do before I get to this point? Absolutely. You know, you know what I mean. And so it's funny how those two live in complete, you know, uh, back and forth, like almost like yin and yang of each other, but they're as separate as can be. That that's kind of funny you said yeah. that. But I agree. I think if if I can live a solid 80 to 85 years of, of fulfillment and joy and helping people and, you know, and of course, you know, you know, meeting the right people, having a legacy, if you will, right. Yeah, it doesn't absolutely. have to be a, a wealthy legacy, but a legacy of people saying, I remember him. And I, you know, I, I, I I'm, I'm glad that he was in my life. Same for me. Um, I think that's the most important thing. for When me. somebody calls you up and they say, you know, you really made a difference. The, yeah. the reason I'm doing X, Y, and Z yeah. Like I have one friend when I, when I was a teenager, um, and, and I, again, I'm sorry to get so you know emotional about this, but no, it's good. when I was, when I was a teenager, I, I really, I, I made friends with these skater kids in the town I moved to. And there was one kid in particular, uh, named Mike Odell, and he ended up moving to Manhattan and becoming a software engineer. And at one point he told me that the reason he did that is because, um, you know, of, the influence I had given on him. So like, even as a kid, I loved making things. And I always told people around me, you know, like I, I tried to make it infectious, you know, and I, I think yes. it was for certain I can humans. Tell. Yeah. And so because Mike ended up going that route, he went into engineering and he credited me with that. I mean, it, it, there's no greater feeling. How, how somebody much better could you, you feel than that? Yeah, exactly. That, right. I mean, you, that is, you feel like a hero. I mean, it's, it's it, great. What a way to what that's a legacy right there. And that even right. if it's just one person, you change somebody's life. I remember I remember this this kid. Uh well he was a kid back in the day, but well, for I, sure. I, but I mean I knew him 
it's probably going back, it's probably going back 15 years ago, maybe, maybe 14, 14 years ago, 22 years old. Yeah. And he's a good guy. He went through a lot of stuff with his family and he really wanted to be an EMT. Oh, he got cool. lost in a couple of things here and there. And I remember I was sitting with a bar with him one time with a whole bunch of other people and we kind of were doing our own thing. And he, he said something to me about it. And I said, I said, you know, I, I can't remember. What I honestly don't even remember what I said then, but I was like, no, I said, you, you definitely should continue doing that. He's like, you know, why stop? He's like, you know, you're always going to run into troubles. I kind of just gave him, you know, I, I knew he was, but I kind of just gave him a very simple, you know, pep talk and said, like, basically I told him life is always going to be hard and these situations are going to always come up. But if you don't do this, if you, if you let go of this too, and other things get better, you're still going to feel like you missed out on your career. And I didn't see him very often after that. He hung out with some, some of my friends and I saw him maybe about three years after that. And he said, you know, I think you saved my life. And I said, what are you talking about? He was on a dark path and I was kind of hanging out with some bad people and whatever. He's like, but I finished up be just because of the talk. Cause I knew that if all else failed, I'd at least have my passion. Whoa. You know what I mean? That's and, awesome. and, and like you said, it wasn't, what you did wasn't on purpose. It was infectious because you loved it and wanted to show people what it meant to you and, and the happiness is what they felt, but you also inspired somebody, you know? And, and I, I think that's what happened there, but. That's yeah, incredible. That was, I mean, there's I'll no greater I'll feeling. Forget that. No, I'll never forget that. On, 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 yeah, not, not, not the day I die, you know? So that's incredible. 80, 85, I don't know, but I'll remember it till then. That's for sure. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and, yeah. and I mean, I think to me, that's a good person, right? Like if you, if you can, if you can influence other people in a positive way and, and create that kind of legacy, I mean, and, and just put more good into the world than, than you yeah. found it with. I mean, I mean that's that's my kind of people that's that's why i'm happy yeah. to know you and you know too, I'm, man. I'm, I'm grateful that you and i have crossed paths is because I mean, yeah i'm know. glad we finally got to do this too and plan this for six months for christ's sake <laughs> yeah but you've been moving i mean it, it's I been difficult it, yeah. you know we all have stuff going on in our lives mm -hmm. i mean i'm sure i got busy once or twice and had to yeah no, I'm pun, I mean, you know, it, but I'm glad we got to it. Like, I mean, you know, if we want to, we can again. I mean, and, yeah. Oh God. So, yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. This has to, this has to be, there has to be a continuation. There has to Absolutely. Be when we both, are, we both lost our voices a little bit more. We'll do it again. We'll do it. Again. We'll do it at two <laughs> o'clock one in the, in the, in the, in the morning when we just got done doing whatever. Like, How you doing? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> What's wrong with these guys? That it's would be the worst talking. work day after that, though. I mean, if we, you know, because I mean, these go like three hours sometimes. So imagine like the, showing up for work. Whoa. I, I've had ones of these that have been released that are three hours long. And so like, I, I, I'm kind of like, I follow Joe Rogan's example. That's kind of my role model in the podcasting sense. Yeah. And so, I mean, he's great. I, I was watching this one today of like this lady that escaped North Korea. And it's just fascinating. Oh, I bet that was cool. Also, that hearing one. her story. It's uh, her name is Park. And I don't remember her last name. But I also Joe Rogan Park. Yeah, Joe Rogan Park. If you look up Joe Rogan cool. Park, you'll find it. And I bet that's super fascinating because that's... It really is. I mean, the, the shit that she's gone through, I mean, it is just most people will never experience that kind of hardship. I mean, and, you know, the the perseverance, the persistence, and the, the you know, I don't know what the word I'm looking for, the strength, you know, in, in being a human to be able to, yeah. to get through that and continue Endure. to go on. I mean, you know, I really admire... I remember I watched a video a little while ago of a guy, he like busted through the North Korea, um, like the guards just to get to South Korea. And I remember he, um, they, 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 they try, I think they opened fire on him. But yeah, they that's got what him. they do. People on the, the other board, they, they, they got him Mark over. Mark was you know? talking about that. Yeah. Good God almighty. I mean, it's just, I mean, man, you know, we complain about this, the littlest things, right? And, and you yeah. see things like that and it's like, oh, okay. I'm doing okay. Like we're always going to have, I'm sure issues with a little bit of money here and there and health and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. But I wake up every morning, you know, I, I have my, my place. I have my shelter. Family. You got food. Nobody's food. trying to. So if the, I don't, I know where to get it. <laughs> yeah. The amazing thing that like Park was saying is that there was a guy that she knew that he got killed for like eating a cow or like killing a cow that because mm. all the animals are state owned. So like they're, they're kept for the purpose of agriculture for the state. So if okay. you kill it, that's illegal because you're stealing from it's the like state. It gets government. Yeah. So you get executed. Yeah. It's, okay. it's, it's okay. crazy totalitarian. And so apparently it used to be um, back when, you know, the Soviet Union was alive. There was this idea of like 
the government will provide everything, you know? So like, right. we'll, we'll give you health care, we'll right? give you food, yeah. we'll give you all this crap, it's this utopia. But then sure. when the Soviet Union collapsed and the money was scarce, mm-hmm. it became like the self-sufficiency idea. And that's when people mm. started starving, you know, and, and, you know, you can't eat, you're looking for grasshoppers because you need the protein. You protein, know? And yeah. It's, it, it, I mean, you know, it's pretty bad so i've I've only gotten maybe half an hour to 45 minutes through the three hour episode but i gotta check that out whenever i think i I got it bad whenever i think about it bad too i think about my my family so my dad's side is armenian you know and they they came through uh the early 1900s to avoid persecution you know they were it was a big genocide and um you know i i I can't imagine what they went through and what they saw you know um because they were actually in my family was actually from my grandmother was from Constantinople, right? Or in Istanbul. Oh, cool. Yeah. But in an Armenian village. She's, she's Armenian. Yeah. And then my Same grandfather. City. Yeah, exactly. My yeah. grandfather was from a place called Karput, which at the time was Armenia. It's not anymore. But yeah. it, now it's Turkey oh, now. And um, those Turkish people take over everything. And I told nothing against anybody, you know, yeah, different times sure. and stuff. I don't, you know. No, but I've known so many Serbians and, and you know, Greeks Greek, and stuff that have been like those yeah. Turk, those fucking yes. Turks. There, there's, <laughs> from the the old world, um, yeah. there's quite a few animosity back and forth between those cultures. Um, yeah. But I'll tell you, they came over, they had nothing. They lived on the south side. They went in these boarding rooms, these boarding halls, and they shine shoes <laughs> cool. you know what i mean and, and uh, here we are here i am today and, and yeah my great grandfather was a street peddler he came over from latvia really and uh yeah, yeah he was just selling stuff on the streets and he got it he got enough money to get a storefront in pittsburgh where i live now and um you know that it's max a's and furs it's a subway station now that's and, amazing uh yeah he was selling fur coats out of there and then um on, on my so it's still on my dad's side, but the other great grandfather had a woman's clothing store. So it was like similar, just Jewish merchant. Yeah. You couldn't do a whole re- lot of things. <laughs> so, retail. Yeah. yeah sold I love clothes. That. Yeah, exactly. I love that, man. <laughs> and my so dad cool. worked for them, like, you know, like summers, yeah. you know, when he was in school. Yeah. Uh, before dude. it became That's a so doc. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah, it was How awesome neat. is that to know that, though? That is like, yeah. it's pure hustle. Pure yeah, for hustle. For sure. And, and I, I mean, the, they never the amount of respect they, they have never for those, that generation. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's incredible. It's incredible that they, they, you know, they came here with a dream and they worked their asses off. And I mean, you know, they're, like you said, they never complained. I mean, you know, they had yeah. nothing to complain about. They were in the land of opportunity, you know. Absolutely. And they, they, it was like open doors. Like, oh, my God. I remember, I remember my mother's grandparents on, on, my, on her mother's side. Uh, they came, they were hundred percent Czech and hundred percent German. And, and oh, cool. they left right before World War II because at the time that, you know, they fell in love. It's a good it was time a to get out. <laughs> no, no. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's Either of those countries, that's a good time to get out for different reasons. Can't do it. So yeah. <laughs> they, they came over and they were like, thank God, you know, because of um, things that are going on. Now the hard part about that was for them was they felt so aligned with America, you know, with America that they, they never, carried over tradition they never spoke their language here so they never spoke czech or german so that was pretty pretty interesting thing to do i i think part of it was they couldn't agree like which one they wanted to teach and like well we're gonna just do english then instead maybe both. my dad's side they yeah, speak yeah I, know, I just thought too how cool would that be but um yeah. my dad's side did speak armenian though they That's they, cool. they spoke like, the birds spoke it like the birds would be like give me kiss in armenian like bachi maldor you know what i mean like that. <laughs> which is cool. actually pretty cool so um yeah but but th- th- those traditions actually live on we still celebrate go to the picnics and stuff like that that's awesome yeah it's, it's pretty cool man but uh man we digressed a lot on that one didn't we no it's fun though i mean that's what i love about doing this is it's just basically a conversation and oh i love this stuff yeah you know, i just chug I whiskey for three sorry, hours and, and bs my yeah. girlfriend's getting a thanksgiving stuff so she's like uh She's like, let me know when you're off. I'm, okay, okay. She's not here yet, but she's. I gotta get groceries from the. Uh, it's all good. The if you gotta go, you gotta go. I'll yeah. let you know when she when she's back. Yeah, we're. She wanted to get groceries today because obviously she didn't want to fight. You know the the crowds tomorrow and on Thanksgiving Day. Jesus, yeah, that's smart. What are you guys doing, by the way? What are you doing for Thanksgiving? So I, I'm actually I was gonna just stay in Pittsburgh and work, but then I realized nobody. Had, so as a business owner with SKA for the last um, six years, I've just been working holidays, uh, Christmas, Thanksgiving, okay. Hanukkah, 
all of it. I, I just go to work because my philosophy has always been it's a time to get a leg up on the rest of the world. Okay. And so okay. if I am the hardest working motherfucker, you know, trying to carry our grandparents' legacy, yeah. you know, then, yep. then I'll do all right. And so I went into work the other day and I, I asked me like, you know, like, hey, so I mean, we're going to be here Thursday, right? And he's like, no. <laughs> like nobody's coming in. What are you fucking kidding me? Like, yeah, are you, are you nuts? <laughs> yeah, what are you fucking nuts? Nobody's doing that. And so I'm like, all right. And I called up my mom and I'm like, hey, you want to do something this year? <laughs> like, oh, like, like less than a week like, ago. What? She think you make work or? <laughs> yeah, it well, exactly. Well, I haven't seen her for like you know. I I try to make it over like maybe every other Thanksgiving because yeah, you know, in my mind, like the the success or failure of my business is correlated to you know like. With your activity yeah yeah exactly and so you know, know if you if you work your ass off you can you can sort of do all right but if you take a holiday then your advantage is compromised and so if somebody's doing it and you're not no i i i feel that way i mean that you know we we never turn off our phones i'll, I'll admit that yeah I and i'll leave of, mine on i'll still be running yeah. slack i'm gonna be working oh, same here I'll get, but, West, I'll get a lot of West Coast call, you know, calls and messages at later at night too, or early yeah, ones from the East Coast, absolutely. And stuff like that. We have then, like a lot of remote it. employees on the West Coast, so I'm constantly. Exactly. And I know all the time zones, right? I mean, it's pretty easy, like Central plus one hour. Super what is easy. it? Uh, Mountain plus two, West Coast yeah. plus three. For me, it's yeah, it's always for me. It's Pacific is always you know two hours ahead. Mountains always one hour ahead, unless you're in Arizona, which they don't follow anything. You got to figure that one out. <laughs> <laughs> Central's obviously my time, and Eastern's an hour ahead. So now behind, good to go. yeah, exactly. Good to go, man. I'm ready to go. Man. Done. No, it's, Done. It's, uh, it's embedded in my my skull now. For some reason, I can never remember how to double check my Outlook calendars to make sure I send people the right ones. I'm it's like, brutal though, being on the West it was Coast. Two o'clock. I'm like, oh my, sorry about that. And you have an East Coast client wake you up at like five a.m. <laughs> it's like motherfucker. What? Want to sleep? <laughs> what? We working tonight? What day is it? You know. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, it's the, the balance of that. Yeah, that's that's the blessing and the burden of technology, right? You we were able to do that 20 years ago, you know. And yeah, for by sure. the way, 20 years ago to me feels like it should be in the 80s still. I can't believe I'm saying 20 years ago and that's 2001. That is bonkers to me. Jesus, you're absolutely right. I, mean, I remember old. 2001. That was when the World Trade Centers fell. I got pulled out yeah. of school. My family had just yeah. moved. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. I was a junior. I remember that, yeah. Yeah. That's a weird thing to remember, huh? No, I mean, you know, it, it's just what we lived, you know? I mean, I, I don't know if it's that weird. Maybe you're right. Maybe it's just because I really haven't gone through anything else besides that. When it well, came I mean, to COVID like a, was, was pretty Well, I meant like more of like a, a huge terrorist attack on America. Yeah, that's true. Like, that I mean, I like COVID, mean, I mean, came and, you know, it shut things down and it was a big, you had to, you had to again, evolve and adapt, but like everybody was going through it, you know? That's true. I don't know, and it could it couldn't be avoided. And I don't know. It's just I had like one that. friend who was who was a Wall Street trader at the time, yeah. and she uh, she only lived because she forgot to wear a suit to work that day. How nuts are those conversations with right? people that like they they left their suitcase at home or something? Exactly. Like that, you know? So she forgot her suit. Her boss dismissed her for the day so she could get dressed properly. She went home to get in her suit. She came back. The building was on fire. Oh, I mean, that's unbelievable. Yeah, it's nuts. Is that fate, you think? Is that luck? I mean, what is that? Definitely, in my opinion, luck. But, okay. like, very good luck. You know? Yeah. So, like, I'm that's grateful bit, because I like being her friend. Was talking about. That's, that's a little bit of luck my dad was talking about when it came yeah, down exactly. to Exactly. The timing. Right? Timing. Yeah, good luck in, in, in timing, you know? And, yeah. and uh, she made herself known to her boss that she forgot her suit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's that's that. That's I, Yeah, I, I think about that actually kind of pretty often that, that day and go back to it and stuff like that. And it, the older I get, the more it means to me, I think. Yeah. And I, I, and I don't know why that is. I'm not really, I, you figure the the more you get used to it, but for some reason, the more I watch it, the more upset I get about it. Interesting. Um, yeah. Well, I, I think cause you learn more as you get older, I think there could have been a lot more done to get those people yeah. out of there sooner and stuff. But sense. again, it's chaos. It's, it's, it's a, it's in the act and, you know, it's it's. I know this is a bad correlation, but it's like a bad foul in sports. You know, sometimes you don't see it the first well, time. Well, I, I don't think moment. that's that bad of a for correlation. So, I mean, I, I think when you have a horribly traumatic incident, and and you know, I mean, or just you know something you're not expecting, and mm -hmm. and it catches you off guard. Yeah. I mean, you know, people that are really, really.
really, 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 really on their game or respond in a way where they'll, you know, prove themselves and they'll mm -hmm. do great things. Um, and I, I hesitate to say this because I don't want to seem too insensitive, but most people don't do that. And so, yeah. you know, it's, 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 it's kind of like sorting people out, but at the same time, it's horrible and you don't want to have to sort people in that way. Exactly. Yeah. It, it, I think that's why I keep thinking about it is, you know, there's so many different scenarios that could have gone down and things like that. And and you think of what you would have done how, and what you, you know, how you could, I don't know, just all those little pieces come together. Yeah, sure. This is a, I'll bring up a lighter thing here. Um, you ever seen Blues Brothers, the movie? I love it. It's one of my favorite movies. I keep hearing the train come by and it keeps reminding me of when they they go to his apartment. So often you'll never hear it. Yeah. <laughs> how often that train cut to? So often you never hear it. And I was like, yep, that makes sense. I was like, I can hear oh, no, no. so often you don't notice it. Yeah, I think that's what it is. So often you won't notice it. <laughs> but I'm seeing, I'm seeing, speaking of accurate, I'm seeing Ghostbusters tomorrow with my brother and my girlfriend and his wife. So let me know how it is because that's one where oh, like, I can't wait. The last time they did that, it wasn't great. And so I'm kind of not looking yeah. forward to this next one. But well, this one I heard is a, it's pure nostalgia. Yeah. A lot of fan service with a good story, good acting, writing, and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, I'll got... send you a picture when we're done. I am, I, 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 let me show you this here. I, I have been a ghost head, right? Uh, since I was a kid, I grew up, you know, in the eighties, right? So yeah. Ghostbusters was like, the but I, I love Ghostbusters as well. I mean, you know, I'm a big fan. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. You guys, you guys can see that in the little thing there. What is that? That's me. I got a Batman hat, a proton pack and a Ghostbusters t-shirt. Oh, that's so cool. Like <laughs> I love so, that. Five or so, something like that. No, it's, and we, we quote it all the time and stuff like that. It's just, uh, yeah, it's but like one of my favorite lines in that it's it's like a love letter to entrepreneurship. I feel like that movie. I mean, call it fate, call it luck, call it karma. I believe you are destined to get thrown out of this dump. <laughs> Everything happens for a reason. <laughs> love that. Or like you know, I, I love like you know this fine feast represents the last they last of our petty, petty funds. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's just just slow down, chew your food, he tells him. Yeah, so chew your food. Yeah. Slow down, chew, chew your food. All right, hold on, let me, let me, let me, let me put a pause and text her on. I think she's here on. No worries, uh, no worries. Yes, are you here? She's a sweetheart, man. I'm lucky. This, this is, she's the best, man. Christine. That's awesome. Chef's kiss, man. She, uh, she's special, man. I think I'm lucky with that one. Yeah. I don't deserve that. I'm a good, good dude. I mean, who I deserves sure anything in this world, right? I That's mean, a good point. Maybe she doesn't deserve... No, I'm, I'm sad. She doesn't listen to this. Okay. Well, it's all philosophical, here. right? I mean, like... I don't think anyone One deserves second. anything, and everyone deserves everything. All right. I got to cut it, bud. All right, I got to run. No, it's been this fun. so much fun. Please, let's do this again. Yeah, absolutely. We've got so much more to discuss, I feel like. This is, oh, this God, is tons more. I mean, if we pleasure. can, let's just do it next month. I don't care. Yeah, I'm down. Um, you let me know. Do you, have, do you have a few seconds to schedule one, or you got to go like right? Yeah, throw it in real quick. Right. Okay, right. yeah. Cool. Well, thank you for coming. Is there anything you want to plug while you're still here? Oh gosh, um, I, I'm saying plug just you know if if you're a hiring manager watching this again, speed is the key. Adapt a little bit. You know, know that you're gonna have to pay a little bit above market if you really want the right person because Agreed. that's gonna excel your workforce and it'll attract other people to come in as well. Find ways to tell your story what your guys are great at and, and what you can provide. Find a way to tell a story about that. It'll grasp the candidate's view. That's what I want to tell people because I think that can help a lot of people build something that they didn't know they had the power to or they didn't really put in their brains to, to put out there into the world. That's what I would say. And of course, Miller Resource Group, 50 years <laughs> in the business. Absolutely. Um, best in the business. Of the business, CPG, industrial automation, got the best people around. I'm ha always happy to help if they want to have a discussion on, on candidacy, of course. It's been good to me. They'll be good to you, too. So thank, thank you. you so much. Pleasure having you on, David. Have a great night. Thanks for you, too, bud. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Take care. Bye. You, too. If you stuck around this long and you like what you've heard, please give us a like and smash that subscribe button or smash that like button and give us a subscribe. We're always looking for new and interesting people to have on the show. If you know anyone good, send an email to podcast at ska.solutions or leave a comment below. Thanks again for listening and please come to the next one.